This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 73 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Back on Track, with the generous support of Equestrian Collections and Kentucky Performance Products. Dressage Radio Show coming to you from the Altec Pavilion at the Altec FEI World Equestrian Games and we have witnessed a fantastic competition here in the Freestyle Dressage, the very final competition here at the Games last night. So we are recording this uh, the very next morning, it was a late night last night, so we decided to do the show the very morning after and uh, I'm in trouble this morning because I've got glee, glee, glee. <laughs> I can't even speak this morning, Glenn. Uh, this, it's early this morning, it was a late night last night. Yeah, Glenn. it was a late night. Uh, well, thanks for coming on the show because you're a bit of a stranger to the dressage radio show. Yeah, I, don't, show. I, don't, I haven't been on the dressage radio show too often, that's for sure. No, well, we thought we'd grab you come on the show because it's too early after all the celebration to expect too many riders to come on the show this morning. We had to get it done, of course. It was too late last night. And then we get into the eventing cross-country today. And those of you who follow both the shows will know that I'm back this evening with the eventing radio show. So, And I'm going to be vi- busy filming all day as well. So we uh, really didn't have much choice on timing to get this show to you. But we wanted to bring you, of course, the highlights of uh, the final day of competition in the horse park. And, uh, Glenn, I, it, it was amazing. That place was full last night. Well, almost full. Uh, I'll night. tell you what, there was, there, they said there were 60,000 plus people here at the park yesterday, and uh, when you walked around, you knew it, because this place, it was hard to walk at times. Yeah. You said you had trouble getting over to the stadium yesterday. Yeah, yeah, I was busy. Um, when I finished recording the eventing radio show last night down here at the pavilion, and... Uh, and you had quite a crowd for that, too, I understand. I had a terrific crowd for that and last not, night. And uh, you had a few guests. Um, just a few. <laughs> Just a few. In fact, it was a lot of fun because we had some Australians and Americans uh, riders, and then um, I managed to get hold of Amy Tryon and uh, her husband Greg, Greg, of course, is of a course friend of the horse. A, right, yeah, right, right, no. and you know he's has his own fan following, and um, Amy teases him about that that he's become the star now. Anyway, so they were on the show, and then when I'd uh, done that, I had to go back up to the broadcast compound to foot to uh, send this uh, file, of course, to our editor at the end of the day, and walking oh five to ten minutes walk from here isn't it up to the top of the hill there um it was just deep in people coming in this would probably would have been about six o'clock and of course the competition started at seven o'clock so uh, i think with undoubtedly though i think that session was the uh, not sold out but it was the most tickets sold i believe I, I did see a few empty seats but for the most part there was a terrific atmosphere there i know we were recording our show and we didn't get to see it so I, I hope that we can uh, find out from you all about the, the freestyle last night. Well, those, are the, those who followed the competition are going to know by now that Edward Garland Morland's Totty Liz, of course, won as expected. And uh, we talked to other riders, of course, on the shows in the previous uh, uh, episodes here at From the Horse Park. And uh, there was no surprises about him winning. I think what I felt watching them all, Glenn, was his margin of success was and the score that they gave him. Um, was at, to be to be delicate here. It was generous, and <clears throat> I think you know you, there's an expectation when you get a superstar like that, probably in any sport, um, and that that you know you get you expect great things. Um, but he did make a couple of mistakes. Um, there's no doubt. Were they mistakes on some of the minor movements? Is that well, not not that not so much. I think. Uh, that they were minor movements. I mean, he has a t- had a hesitation. He broke in an extended trot, um, and then, um, uh, I mean, his double canter pirouettes were absolutely beautiful in his PFs. Um, and you know, the quality of those is where he makes up his mark because he's such an extravagant mover. And if you're extravagant and correct, um, that's where you're going to pick up the marks on the difficult moves. And that I felt that's really what he did. And uh, you know, he won on a score of 91.8. Uh, which now, is that a WEG record? It's a record, period. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> so I think, uh, you know, while we've been watching him work break world records, that in itself was, I think, more than probably people expected. And uh, I, I uh, have to say, I watched him the first two rides he did here during the week. And you know me, I'm a horse husband, and yeah. you know very little about dressage. 
but I had goosebumps when he was yeah. out there. And I think that's it's good for the sport that way because even the amateur non dressage people can watch him and and get goosebumps. Yeah, and I think that's soft, you know, and that is the kind of audience that this sport is building. Um, because if you look around that stadium last night, Glenn, there were thousands of people. It would ha be hard to imagine that they were all dressage experts. Right. You know, they were a lot of people that just enjoy the the sport and and appreciate it for being good quality, um, but may not be themselves experts or involved with the sport. Uh, a lot of um, just general horse lovers, people from other disciplines, know that this was the big night and and got tickets for I it. I imagine you could hear that. <coughs> you have to excuse me. Oh, Glenn's, uh, Glenn's, <laughs> Glenn's suffering here. He's, uh, he caught the dreaded wag. Yes, I caught the wag. F we're calling a wag fever. Wag fever, yeah. right. And, and I don't know why I'm sitting across from him. I don't him. know either. Samantha caught it too. So last night's show was interesting with us both trying to get through it. But I, was the, I imagine that you could hear the cheering all the way in Ohio yeah, you probably last could. night. <laughs> you probably could. There was incredible roars from the crowd. And, uh, you know, one of the darlings of this Dressage World Championships, Glenn, has been the British rider, oh, Laura Bechtel-Simon. That's the story here. Everybody expected Edward to do well, but she sure. hung in there for all three. I mean, yeah. we ended up, the placings were the same. Yep. We had uh, Edward and then Laura and then Stefan. Uh, so it was that way all week. It was, and uh, so so the nice thing is for the Americans, even though they missed out on a team medal, uh, Stefan went all the way and uh, took home two bronze medals, one from the Grand Prix Special and one last night, and a lovely performance. You know, Stefan is such a professional, and, you know, Ravel's just a different horse to Tottilus, and yeah, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed him. I didn't see any big mistakes with, with um Ravel at all, and uh, you know he just gives such a polished performance. Um, absolutely lovely and and explain, very popular. Explain the differences. That's one of the things that I think caught people's attention this week is between the three horses. They're all very different horses. Laura's very. horse too. Yeah, very. And I haven't stood up to Laura's horse, uh, Mr. Horace, uh, stood up against him. I don't know how about. He's a big horse. I mean, I think she's probably my how about about five nine. But he's a big, rangy chestnut horse and a lovely, lovely horse. And she uh, clearly has got a wonderful partnership. And, uh, you, you know, I've watched British dressage over the years. Um, they were always known in England for their eventing. But uh, the way that the nation has really developed the sport over there is extraordinary. And it's paying off. I think, you know, Laura has become kind of the, uh, the Zara Phillips of the dressage world. Zara Phillips, of course, uh, Princess Anne's daughter who rides in event. It was uh, previous. Well, is up until tomorrow, will be the uh, reigning world champion. Is that's going to change tomorrow? We've got a helicopter yeah, going sounds overhead. Like he's coming into the tent here. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> uh, it's a beautiful morning again, you know, out, out here, and I think that we're going to get the crowds coming in again today. But um, last night, as I said, they were pouring into this main stadium and uh, watched some great dressage. And um, just to give you the scores, these are unconfirmed scores because I've not been back to the press tent uh, since uh, I came straight here this morning to record the show. I haven't been back to get the official sheet. But as of last night, as I walked away from the stadium, those scores would be uh, Tottilus and uh, Edward Gall, 91.8 for the gold medal. And then uh, Laura Bechtelsheimer with Mistral Horris, 85.350 to take the silver medal. Followed by Stefan, of course, and Ravel with 84.850. Um, and if I'm a point or two out there, it's because, as I said, I didn't uh, get the final sheet last night. And I'll make corrections next week on the Dressage Radio Show. Will it be the week after? We, we don't come back for a week. We're going to take a week off from yeah, the show. Yeah, next week. Well, we're, we're finishing up WAGS, so you'll be back the week after that. That's right. The week after that, we'll be back with the uh, <laughs> Dressage Radio Show. So um, we'll see who we can get on then to... Uh, I have a complete review of the games um, for dressage, but uh, we're going to take a short break here when we come back. Glenn and I are going to talk some more about the games, and um, I'm going to get um, my friend his uh, dressage opinions because he's, he's learned more about dressage in the past few days than he ever thought he could. So don't go away. We'll be back in just a second. Are you attending the World Equestrian Games right now? If so, stop by back on Track's booth. Number 418, to see why so many professional dressage riders, eventers, and show jumpers from around the world use Back on Track's therapeutic products for themselves and their horses. Top dressage rider Michelle Gibson says, 
Back on Track's new exercise boots are the best exercise boots ever. Back on Track is a therapeutic product line used on horses to help keep them sound. From blankets to knee boots to hock boots to leg wraps. Check out them at the World Equestrian Games booth number 418 or online at backontrackproducts.com. That's backontrackproducts.com. All right, Glenn. Um, you have been exposed to the best dressage in the world. What did you think of it? I thought it was fantastic. Actually, you know me. I'm a horse husband. So, you know, dressage was always our least favorite part of eventing, and that my wife is an eventer. But when you see the top in the world go, it's a whole different ball game. I mean, you don't, you don't have to know a lot about dressage to appreciate the beauty of it and to appreciate how hard it is. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, there was um, Tammy Srantz is our co-host on the Western Radio Show now. And she is a world-class shooter. She's the top in the world in, mm -hmm. in mounted shooting. She went to dressage the other day. Oh, she did? And watched it. And she wrote on her Facebook page that uh, she said, I'm here at dressage. Uh, you know, I, I feel like uh, I'm a duck out of water, you know. It's, uh, it's, it's completely different than anything I've ever seen before, which started a whole conversation. And one guy came in right away and said, made a negative comment about dressage. Now, keep in mind, she's in the Western world. So this negative comment came in about dressage. Well, you should have seen the people from the Western side defend dressage. The whole, there must have been another 10 comments saying, you go out and try a Grand Prix. Yeah. You know, so I think, I think that even across the whole spectrum of the horse world, there's, there's, an there's a new respect. And I think that horses like Tealis really do uh, enhance that. We needed a superstar. Yes. And I, this, every sport needs a superstar. Yeah. Uh, occasionally, like, you know, we got the Secretariat movie coming out here. You know, every discipline needs a superstar, and I think Dressage got it when they needed it the most right now. Yes. Well, they've got Morland's Totilus, of course, and, and Ed Gall, and they've also, I think, got with Laura Bechtelsheimer, they're kind of, you know, the darling of, of uh, Dressage now. She's, you know, we've had her on the show, and she's a delightful girl. Would love to have had her on this morning, of course, but the press officer said to me last night, looked at me, Chris, I like <laughs> Chris, no <You're> hope. <laughs> I think they'll be laying in this morning. Um, and Stefan had said to me a couple of days ago, yeah, sure, I'll come back on the show. But, and then he realized, it, well, it was actually 7 o'clock in the morning, so maybe not. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> can get him next week, next show. Anytime, and they, I think there'll be some, there will have been some well, celebrating going on. He's still a fan, fan favorite in the United States here. For sure. Obviously. For sure. You know, he's done something that... Uh, I, I think I read in the press release this morning that he was the first one to win two, two bronzes for the United States in dressage. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think probably. I read that this morning. So, yeah. so he's still a superstar in the United States. For sure, for sure. And, you know, he had a terrific reception when he came in last night, and, and justifiably so. You know, he, he's such a lovely guy and a great sportsman, great member of the team, and, and just, you know, only only good things come when, when Stefan's around. And, uh, you know, he's such a beautiful, beautiful rider. You know, the one thing I've noticed, Glenn, is there's a shift in, in riding styles to a softer approach, you know, um, you know, there have been sort of techniques in the past and training methods that have not been as soft as they are becoming now. There's some riders like Laura, like Stefan, um, you know, adapting a just a really nice, quiet style. And uh, uh, there was some appreciation amongst my colleagues and journalists back in the press center for and, and them noticing this. And, you know, so, okay, now it's time, you know, because... As you know, and you follow the sport enough to know that, that it's had its critics in recent weeks and months, um, certainly this year um, and over the past winter, f for some training techniques which have had some bad press. And, and I think now there's a, there's a new generation of riders and there's, a, there's such a growth in the sport that they're realizing they're having to make changes. And uh, I think some of the, I wouldn't say old brigade, because they're still actively competi competing and uh, You'll see a you'll see a, sh a difference between those and the new blood. Well, let's uh, let's take a break here, and when we come back, I want to ask you. You've been to every wag that that has ever happened, and I want to talk to you a little bit. Let's talk more general terms. Seeing this is the last dressage show now from the World Equestrian Games, let's talk a little bit about our experiences here at the wag outside of the competition. Okay.
Equestrian Collections is your source for all of your dressage and tack equipment needs. From Anki, Kiefer, Veritas, Bates, Vespucci, Wintech, and more. Shop in comfort and equip your dressage horse in style at equestriancollections.com. And become a fan on Facebook and join in one of the most vibrant communities on Facebook with over 23,000 fans. And you can win cool stuff there, too. Remember, that's Equestrian collections.com for all of your dressage needs well we're back at the uh, Altec pavilion in the kentucky horse park now for our final show here from the Altec fei world equestrian games and uh, um, i mean as i said earlier at the top of the show i'm in trouble today because uh, glenn's on the other side of the table with a microphone please so forgive me everybody anything can happen i mean you know we, we love to have you on the shows glenn um we never thought we'd get you on the dress. No, yeah, you? this is a, this is, a, and get me up at seven o'clock in the morning to yeah. do it. <laughs> well, the uh, you've been to every World Equestrian Games that there has been, so I just wanted to get your opinion on on this games as a whole, not just the competitions. But let's start with the dressage competition. Um, you, you know, as far as the dressage competition goes, how does it rate with with the others? Well, you know, it's 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 hard to compare it with the others in because. Horse and rider, uh, horse and riders are different. That you know, you've got a lot of horses back in the day of of Rembrandt, and um, you know when uh, um, I'm just trying to think. Of, you know, Bonfire, and um, there's a lot of you know the horses of the previous games that are, are different. The competition, you know, in in, de in days past, in years past. It was between, you know, two or three of the titans of the sport, which changes in any sport, you know, uh, over time. So can you compare it? It's different. Um, and the the scores were different. I mean, now we're getting up to breaking world records. We saw a 91, over 91 last night. Uh, you know, so there's a shift, like I said before the break, you know, there's a shift in the sport. And uh, how does it compare? I, it's hard to say how it compares because the because the com com competitors are different. You know, it used to be between Germany and for the longest time between Germany and um, the Netherlands, and you know that now is changing. That's what's changed. If there is a shift, that has changed at these games, and it changed at the European Championships last year because Britain are now after. Uh, just being nowhere, have developed their, their sport in their country to the point where they have a very competitive team now. And, uh, y you know, when you can divide the, the, the Germans and the Dutch, you people are paying attention to you. There, right there, is the shift in the sport now, where these other nations where, you know, okay, America have been there and thereabouts for a while. But for Britain, who you know 10 15 years ago when nobody in dressage and now they've got you know a, a whole team that's competitive and and can threaten the dutch and the germans all the way well, let's talk a little bit about the world equestrian games in as a whole there's been some negative press actually about the size of the park uh, because in europe the the venues are much smaller and this is huge and your feet know it after about the first three <laughs> days your your feet feel like they're going to fall off now might have just gotten to the point where they're numb they're and totally yeah dead, you just don't they? even know they're on your body anymore and it is a big place to walk around it is yes but thank god if we had put sixty thousand people in a smaller venue you wouldn't have been able to move i mean when you walk around this park which is huge and there's people everywhere you realize that that they needed a space this bring in big to bring in sixty eighty thousand people yeah yeah it is a huge space and, and different to the other venues. Um, of course, we're somewhat divided anyway. Um, uh, but when we got to Arkan last year, of course, Arkan is on, I don't know, a third of the acreage to what we have here. Um, and they always have huge crowds, but it, it, and, it, and it really was packed to get around. I mean, the venues are very close together in, in Aachen. And, it, it, oh, gosh, getting through, you know, when you're working and getting through the public um, who are, of course, meandering. They're taking their time, they're shopping. And, and, it, and it was packed over there. It was very frustrating getting from, you know, maybe from the press center to an arena or the broadcast compound or wherever you were going. Um, it, it, that, that, you know, is there right there is a huge difference to what we have here. I think there were a lot of complaints, even though people knew, okay, this is a walking venue. That's how it was promoted. But, you know, when you've, when you've walked from the car park to 
the main entrance. You've walked around the shops for a bit, and then you've gone to a stadium and watched whichever competition you're watching. Especially for the raining and the vaulting, which is down at the, the Old Tech Arena. Um, that right there is is a huge, huge difference, uh, uh, it, you know, to your day. Because if you want to do some shopping, then you have to carry it all the way back to uh, the but parking lot. People were doing shopping. Oh, my God. The, the vendor shops were packed yesterday. Yeah. And you saw a lot of bags. You saw a lot of red bitter, bit, bitter Britain bags, too. Did you? He has a huge booth up here. And he has about 10 checkouts. I talked to him. Uh, That's two John, days, John, uh, Nunn. John Nunn. He yeah. did. Uh, now, he comes to every Rolex, and he does very well at Rolex. He has the yeah. biggest booth at every Rolex. He said he did a record-breaking day in his 20 years here two days ago. So I can't imagine what yesterday was like. It had yeah. to be huge for him. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's surprising. I mean, we've got a lot of very good friend, vendors here. And uh, um, yesterday being a Friday, I was slightly surprised at how big the crowds were, actually. I know they were coming in the evening for the freestyle, but during the day there was good crowds. You expected on a weekend, especially today with, of course, the cross-country. Uh, so, you know, hopefully it will pick up. Hopefully the, the word is getting around, certainly locally, regionally. This, where is people can this is something that everybody should come out to. You know, as much talk as there was before the games about parking and all this stuff, I have had no trouble getting in. The, there has not been lines. They've done a, they must have a 1,000 volunteers in the parking lot with their yes. little wands. <laughs> and, you know, the movement of people has been terrific. Yeah. I leave here every day around 4 to 5 to go down and record our show downtown. And going downtown has been simple. You know, that yeah. hasn't been a problem at all. I get down there in 10 minutes. You know, and I think people have been staying away from downtown and Spotlight Lexington uh, and things like that, fearing the traffic. It isn't that bad. No, you no. Know, well, hopefully the local people will, will um, you know, take the chance to come over and uh, enjoy the, the, the competitions that are left. We've got, uh, of course, uh, a lot of... Um, Jump, we've got the jumping to come, the vaulting, the para dressage, and and, and uh, uh, driving. Hello. Oh yeah, the driving. <laughs> the, we've got the <laughs> Which driving. Which is my favorite. The driving, and then of course uh, always the, the the closing ceremony, which we hope people will stay around for a uh, week on Sunday. Um, the para dressage, for those of you uh, um, who follow the show, will know that we do cover para dressage on the dressage radio show. But because we're only doing four shows from here, Glenn, we're going to bring you news and highlights and interviews and all the rest of it. We will actually cover that when we come back after the World Equestrian Games. And, of course, so. we'll be covering that on the 2010 radio show as the days go along. And we're doing our daily coverage at yep, 2010radioshow.com. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, we've got a landmark on the Horse Radio Network tomorrow with today's show on um, eventing. Yes. Oh, is it 100 today? It is. Well, congratulations. Yes, 100 shows. How about wow. that? Yeah. Um, and also, going back to the Dressage Radio Show, which is what we're talking about here, <laughs> not to get carried away with everything else that's going on in the horse park, um, we are getting close, Glenn, I mean so close, to 1,000 fans on Facebook. Oh, but I have to give you bad news. I know the Western... Alan put on a big push here on the Western yeah. Radio Show to beat you guys. He, he advertised it everywhere, trying to get... Uh, and they, they, they beat the dressage fans by well, a couple okay. days. Well, that's okay. That's okay. We can take it. You know, <laughs> we're, we're tough over here on dressage. We can take that. That and, was a nice little rivalry that went back and forth well, between course, the Western and the yeah, dressage Yeah, but show. you know, I had the disadvantage of being here. Not yes, being I to told him that, too. I said, <laughs> if Chris had had a chance to do the push like you had the chance to do, you might have lost that one. <laughs> but it was fun. It, you know... And, and what we should say, Glenn, here, the Horse Radio Network is still relative fledgling, but we have grown enormously. Let's, let's in talk a, a little bit about that after this last break, because I, I have some things I want to share about that that I'm kind of proud of. Okay. Okay. We'll do it. Stay, stay right where you are. I'll be back in a second. One thing horse people look for in a supplement is a safe, reliable product that will address the challenges facing their horse. The employees at Kentucky Performance Products couldn't agree more. In fact, they feed KPP supplements to their own horses. KPP employees are horse people, too, and the horse that matters to you matters to them. That's why each bucket has to meet their high-quality standards. Their formulas are fixed to ensure consistency from bucket to bucket. Only the best ingredients are used, and each product is formulated based on sound research. KPP supplements deliver the results you are looking for. To choose the right KPP supplement for your horse, go to kppusa.com. Or to learn more about horse nutrition and interact with the experts at KPP, join their Facebook page by searching for Kentucky Performance Products. So what are you proud of, Glenn? 
I'm proud of the fact that when we are on the grounds here at the Kentucky Horse Park, two years ago, we started with a little show called the Stable Scoop Show. It's the only show we had. And then we did, I started the 2010 radio show all about the World of Equestrian Games. That was 120, well, our last show is going to be 120, so 120 weeks ago. And then you started the event, well, we started together eventing. And uh, I, I have met so many fans. I, I have this voice that I always hated, but apparently is kind of unique. So when I'm walking around the grounds here, people are stopping me all the time saying, are you Glenn? Even in the press tent yesterday. Well, you, you are we wearing the baseball cap, well, too, with too, the logo they on my it. voice. They say, I recognize your voice. And I, there must have been 30, 40 times now in the park in the past week where people stop us. The, the horse radio network is getting out there now. Oh, for sure. And yeah. we're we're getting a lot. I'm not bragging here. I'm just saying we're getting a lot more respect. Our, uh, you know, we have some of the greatest affiliates and people listen on on all these different websites. Yes. I spent yeah. some time with the girls from the Chronicle the other night, mm -hmm. and uh, you know they're they're getting they're getting downloads from from our shows. They're gonna, you know, we're talking about doing more with them. Um, we have the horse and the horse city and and about forty other, uh, you know about 40 other affiliate websites across the internet. So I was just kind of proud of all of, of, all of us uh, that are part of the Horse Radio Network. And that includes the hosts that aren't here, you know, Helena sure. and Alan. And sure. Now Tammy's been over here from the Western Radio Show enjoying dressage and, you know, things like that. That's what's so neat about the World of Question Games. When, when I was in watching raining, I watched a lot of raining this week. When I was in watching the finals in raining, the comment I made on Twitter that got a lot of retweets, actually, was that there were very few cowboy hats in the audience. These weren't necessarily Western yeah, fans, right, that's you know? Interesting, yeah. So these yeah. were just fans of sport. And I think that's what's happening at this World Equestrian Games. Yeah. Is your, because, you know, because it's all in one location, it may be, you may have to walk from one you know, to two miles to, to get to something. But because it's one location, I think we're seeing a lot of crossover that they, you probably haven't Which seen before. Which is exactly what the FEI, the International Equestrian Federation, were hoping when they, that by putting uh, all these uh, discipline, all the FEI disciplines together, that was that they wanted that crossover between the disciplines. They wanted more media and public attention to equestrian sport, of course. And when you get them all in the one venue, in terms, certainly from from as a journalist, you know, when you get in to uh, a competition like that you're covering things that you otherwise wouldn't cover i remember when with the early world of question games i was covering endurance i hadn't actually covered it as a journalist before driving i had a bit I'd done some features on but not really gone to a competition um and done much competition footage and then and then along came raining of course in 2002 so yes that you know it's serving its purpose as as, as you know in terms of getting it to a, a an audience uh, and crossing those lines between disciplines, because you know how we can be kind of silo mentality in um, when it comes to our discipline. You know, so this is this is the really what they, the FEI would hope to achieve by by um, getting audiences from other sports. And I think they have. I think that that has been accomplished at this games. And I hope that continues, because, of course, that's our mission statement, too. That's why we do all the shows we do. Well, it's also, you know, to that point, Glenn, you know, we have a lot of people from, you know, the three shows that I do, they'll listen to all my shows. Even if they're an inventor, they're listening to dressage and jumping or yeah. vice versa. You know, I yeah. met one of your fans last night down at the International Equestrian Festival, and she's volunteering here today driving a golf cart from Iowa. And she listens to all the shows, and, you know, she's now crossing over into, she says, I'm listening to the Western show now. <laughs> so, you know, it has the interest. She listens to all your shows. She's an inventor, but she really likes the jumping show. So, yeah, you know, that's her favorite. So, you, know, you never know. You never know. Each to their own. Well, you know, before we finish up here, Glenn, I do want to come back to the competition and yep. make just a few other observations, because... Um, Isabel Verth, who's been a fan of, you know, a great friend of the show, she competed last night. She finished on 80, um, 80 exactly 80, according to the provisional scores with Vorumnicht and used some beautiful classical music in her piece, uh, which is a well-established uh, choreographed freestyle now. Um, beautiful classic, you know, Land of Hope and Glory, which, of course, is Elgar, the British composer, and then Chopin, and, you know, she mixes it up, but uh, loves her classical music. And, you know, was one thing about Isabella, it was a few years ago, no, way, way back, I think I asked her what was on her iPod, and the only thing that was on her iPod was her freestyle music. Um, that just tells you how devoted she is to... Uh, 
you know, such a professional, Isabel, and uh, lovely to see her here. I had a chance to have a few words with her at the start of the competition, well, she, but before the competition started, actually, and uh, she was in great form, and her son, Frederick, was here, and, uh, and, her, and her partner, uh, they'd gone off golfing. <laughs> they were sort of alternating between the golf course and the, and the uh, showgrounds here. Um, but great to see her with Verumnik, and uh, she did a lovely test last night. I think she was a bit uh, disappointed with their team's performance, of course, um, not um, you know getting the medal of the, the colour that she wanted. But she's such a professional, such a you know such a so competitive, I should say, um, that I think she made up for it last night. It was a lovely polished performance um, all round and she seemed to be pretty thrilled. I haven't spoken to her since, um, but uh, maybe I'll see her wandering around today before they leave the showground. So I wanted to mention uh, Isabel, of course, and uh, and if you listen to the show, Isabel, lovely to see you again, and uh, you know we'll have you back on the show, as always. Um, uh, certainly get her impressions after the games because she's been to so many, so we'll get her back. Um, the one test... <laughs> caused quite a bit of controversy last night was the Spanish rider Juan, Mara, Juan Manuel Munoz Diaz with uh, Fuego uh, the 12th, that lovely little grey stallion um, who is a PRE, he's a Spanish uh, purebred horse he put on a show um, and I've noticed this in the past with Spanish bred horses, you know they're very short, compact, it's very easy to get them underneath you relatively they, uh, they do their PFs rather well and uh, um, you know, and their passage <coughs> and those transitions are much easier for them than the, the bigger more rangy warm bloods and, and, and he's, he's a showman, in fact when he was going around the arena before the bell uh, the horse had a scratch, so he literally dropped the reins and let the horse put his head down to scratch himself and <laughs> completely dropped the reins. Um, and then, you know, was was being a showman about it. And then he picked up his reins, the bell rang, and off he went. And there was a couple of times he, he did a couple of movements, you know, with one-handed, and he was, I, I believe, um, from where I was sitting, he was the only rider to do any one-handed movements, which can... Uh, pick up some points if you do one handed particularly like a one or two time changes on a bending line on a circle or bending line if you do this uh, uh, or a passage with the uh, one hand that that will score you extra points well he did that with a couple of uh, straightforward movements um, um, uh, he did a one handed uh, trot down the center line a couple of times and then when he'd finished um, when he got to the final halt he, he knew he had the crowd behind him. He really warmed them up. Oh, they he was playing to them. loved him. They were, he was really playing to them. And then, he, and then he nearly fell off, actually, when, because when he did his final halt, the crowd went absolutely crazy for him, absolutely wild. And the noise, the horse didn't expect it, and he darted forward a bit <laughs> and caused uh, Juan Manuel to, uh, to lean back for a second and grab the reins again. Um, and then as he left, he was uh, playing to the crowds. I mean, he totally playing to the crowds. And he got rewarded with an 81.45. <coughs> I think the crowd was expecting different. If you'd have heard the crowd's reaction when the score came up, Glenn, you think, oh, my goodness. Um, going to have a riot? We're going to have a riot here. They expected much more. And yet I, sp I think sometimes, as I said a moment ago, you see a certain type of horse, and when you then see the Spanish horse, you know it's an Andalusian, and it's it. Well, oh, they're Spanish beautiful woman. and they're flashy, and you know, just yeah. And but they can be a lot of show of there. Show. Yep. Um, is it correct, correct classical dressage? You know, that's what the judges decide or don't decide whether you know he performed them um, to deserve the marks that he did. I did speak to one of our riders, uh, one of. Um, Friends of the Dressage Radio Show after the competition, and I asked them what they thought of that. And uh, as much as they liked uh, Juan Manuel and and uh, you know as a com and rider competitor, um, they felt that he was generously marked. And then I had another comment from uh, a dressage uh, person uh, who said that that was outrageous and it was political that he should get the mark slow marks and. Uh, that he was being penalized because he was a Spanish purebred. So I'm going to leave the show with on that note, Glenn, and I'm going to invite comments because, of course, these uh, 
tests will be all over YouTube, and there'll be a lot of people in our dressage community here on the Horse Radio Network, amongst the almost 1,000 fans on Facebook as well, <laughs> who will have their own opinions of how this competition unfolded. And, and if, you, if you did watch the Spanish rider, Juan Manuel, if you did watch the, the top 10, at least, um, in the freestyle, and you saw the diversity, the diversity in the music, um, I should also give a shout-out to Ashley Holtz, Holzer and Popheart. You know, they're always very popular, and I loved their test. It was lovely. And, one, the, and the other one that I'm going to mention um, is the Swiss rider who came in earlier, uh, Marcella krimke Susmeler. She rode uh, Corinth, a, a bay gelding. Um, I actually, I thought the music was nice. It really gelled together. And, and I was very impressed. I, I really liked that combination. You know, the Swiss have, uh, oh, in, I don't think I quite made a team this time. Um, but I've always keep an eye on the Swiss because I spent some time in Switzerland years ago and uh, certainly with dressage too. And uh, I really like that test. It was 75.3 uh, uh, was the provisional score for her. And, and just one that, you know, noted for the future. But just going back to my point, if you did watch any of those, I'd love to hear from you and hear what you think about how this competition unfolded. If you feel the medals were fairly distributed and if the marks... Uh, were what you might have given from the stands and uh, certainly in those last few that went uh, towards the end there that was the top four um, of course um, or top five that final grouping of Laura and then Juan Manuel, Ed Gould, Stefan Peters and of course Imka Shellikens Bartles we shouldn't forget her she went finally um, she was the last uh, combination to go in last night she scored 82.10 on that little bear sunrise which was very nice test very nice test and I'd love to hear from you. Um, send me an email, chris at horseradionetwork.com, or uh, you can post something on Facebook. Let's start a, our own little uh, forum going on this because, um, it, it, you know, it, our show thrives on what you have to say, and we'd love to get your feedback. So um, don't forget to do that. And uh, <coughs> I'll be back a um, couple of weeks' time, wouldn't it be, Glenn? Yep. And then, of course, don't forget that we're doing the 2010 radio show all the way through next Sunday, so every night, to recording from the International Equestrian Festival. So uh, take a listen. Our show goes out, we used to say, about 9 o'clock. Now we say about 10 to 11 o'clock <laughs> because uh, it hasn't happened as quickly as we had hoped. But uh, we're getting them done. So. We, yeah, we are. We are getting them done. And I'll be back with the eventing radio show. We have two more shows, of course, tonight. Glenn, um, cross country. We're going to head out there now as the crowds, I'm sure, are pouring into the horse park as we speak. Uh, the On sun a beautiful, gorgeous. beautiful day. It's really cool. gorgeous. It's going to be perfect for the horses. Perfect for the horses. Yeah, it's yep. just going to be a great day. And they have the course looking fantastic. It's been watered. The late, you can tell where the lanes are because it's the only watered part yep. out there. And it's it's really neat to see. Yeah, it's been that. that uh, the galloping lanes have been irrigated now for a number of weeks. And uh, hopefully it's been consistent enough to soak in because you're afraid it's just kept the green, grass green. But hopefully it's gone in a bit too and, and will help them. The, for sure they'll be on top of the ground today but if you listen to eventing as well come and join me tonight uh, we will get that show up as quickly as possible after i've recorded that this evening and uh we'll be back next week of course with and the jumping radio show i've got four episodes of the jumping radio show where the competition starts here and don't forget you week. can actually listen to streaming if you if you're afraid you're going to miss some of the shows go to uh on your iphone you can go to the app store and search for hallway feeds and pull up the Hallway Feeds app, and you'll find that we're on there, and you can actually stream our shows. So if you're not, not able to hook into your iTunes and download them that way, you can actually listen through the Hallway Feeds streaming right through your phone. Absolutely. Well, before we go, um, I'd like to thank Alltech for hosting us yes, here in the Alltech Pavilion. It's been fun coming over to Alltech. Uh, I've gotten a lot of pictures from here, too. Oh, you do? Because there's just so much happening over here. Good. Well, I hope you'll post some of those on, yeah, uh, on we've Facebook. Been, we've been posting a lot of them on 2010 Radio Show. Okay. It's so tough to post everywhere and get it all done here in a day. All right. So if you hop over to the to 2010 Radio Show on Facebook, you'll see Samantha's been taking pictures, and, and right. I have to. I've been getting comments that I, the only pictures they seem to see of me are with pretty girls. And now the English... I wonder some, why. There's Good. some English bloggers that are challenging me now that I can't get 50 pictures in one day with pretty girls. So that challenge is going to be accepted. And one of these days, after I get rid of the uh, WAG fever, uh, we're going we're gonna to have a photographer go around with me, and we're going to so, try and accomplish that. So it, you're not presenting me with a challenge I can't match that? Oh, you know what? I could, you know, I could, you could, you could show up with uh, 50 good-looking guys, I'm sure. There's 
there's plenty of those mm. here. Yeah, all right. Well, let me think about that. <laughs> well, before we get, before I let Glenn go today, we're going to get him take a picture so you can see where we were recording, and we'll put that up on Facebook. And uh, I want to thank you all for joining us, and, uh, of course, the live audiences that we had when we were recording these shows outdoors on the stage here at the Old Tech Pavilion. It's been a lot of fun. I do want your comeback, your your feedback and your comments to uh, how this competition has unfolded. We'll look forward to hearing from you. So go on to Facebook if you only have a second or send me an email and uh, we'll talk about this again more when we come and back. Thank you for inviting to... me, Chris. Uh, and uh, for the fans' for benefit, I, I'm not going to be a regular, so you don't have to worry. You can <laughs> tune in again. And I apologize. <laughs> well, I'm glad you enjoyed some dressage. <laughs> okay. I did. I actually thoroughly did. Well, and, and thanks for your company this morning, getting up a Early and coming down here to be with me to do this show. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'll be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, enjoy your dress hours until then. This is Chris Stafford, Stafford signing off from the Kentucky Horse Park and the Altec FEI World Equestrian Games. You can find our show notes at dressageradio.com. You can visit us on Facebook. We have a fan page there. Or follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio and Chris E. Stafford. You can send me an email at chris at horseradionetwork.com or leave us a voicemail at 270-803-0025. Our thanks again to all our sponsors here and our backstage crew. 